YouTube, what's going on, baby? It's your boy Ron Real, aka Double R, back in the building, back with another video, back with another damn banger. We are continuing on with the second annual Cigar Madness Tournament. Got another heavy hitter of a matchup for you guys today. We're going to be looking at the number one lead. <laughs> Number one seed, Supreme Leaf Toro, and it'll be going against the number four seed, Aladino Corojo Reserva. We got a Nicaraguan Puro, Honduran Pur Puro. Hey man, I don't know what's gonna happen in both of these cigars are dynamite, so y'all hang tight and stay tuned. Aladino Corojo Reserva and Toro, another cigar. That's our Honduran Puro. Honduran Puro cigar, fantastic flavors, complex, full, all out assault on your taste buds. That should be a really heavy hitter of a matchup. I'm expecting good things from that one. Really, really excited. All right, all right, all right. We are here, we are here, we are here. Another matchup for the second annual Cigar Madness Tournament. We're gonna be looking at the number one seed, Aganorsa Leaf Supreme Leaf Toro. And it will be going up against the number four seed, the Aladino Corojo Reserva in Toro. Now these are both Puros in their own respective regions. We have a Honduran Puro in the Aladino Corojo Reserva, Nicaraguan Puro in the Aganorsa Leaf Supreme Leaf Toro. Now this is a, the Supreme Leaf is a six by 54 box press Toro. We got a six by 52 Parejo in the Aladino Corojo Reserva. We will smoke the Aladino Corojo Reserva first since it is the four seed. Oh, I know I'm breaking up my sweaters and suits that you'll probably be seeing throughout the tournament, but I want to give a huge shout out to my brother, Cowboy Man. I'm just a cigar opinionist, that's all, man. That's all this tournament is. Like I said before, don't take things literal. It's just stating my enjoyment factor for whatever said cigars are on a particular day. I prefer one over the other. That's all, man, it's just an opinion. Now, with that being said, we will continue on into the matchup. You have your signature tissue paper that is the around the Corojo Reserva. That's how you'll be able to know the difference between this and the other Aganors or this is the other Aladino offerings because this has the tissue paper around it. Now this is a Corojo Honduran or Honduran Corojo Puro. Make sure I say that right. Very nice looking cigar, not very shiny and oily, but it does have a nice look to it. Nice paper, paper bag brown look. Nice double cap on this thing. Does have some tooth present, tight and visible seams. Has a nice cedar barnyard smell on this one too. Not, not, so far since I've been smelling cigars, haven't really been smelling anything too off the wall. This just smells like nice tobacco, a little cedar, a little barnyard. Has a very nice uh, hand feel in it. It feels very nice and dense. So with that being said, we'll go ahead and cut it up and get in the battle. See what we got. Now I'm very familiar with both of these cigars. The Supreme Leaf Toro is one of my favorite cigars of 2020, even though the Robusto edged it out as far as my top 10 cigar of the uh, year list. Corojo Reserva and Robusto, this was also featured in the top 10 cigar of the year list for me, but in a different size as well. It's kind of funny, I'm smoking the Toros of both said cigars, but I actually prefer the Robusto in, either, in uh, both variants as well too, so. Price point on the Aladino runs around $13, $14, somewhere in that neighborhood. Your Aganorsa Leaf Supreme Leaf Toro retail for right around $10.50, so you might as well say $11. But we'll go ahead and get into this Aladino Corojo Reserva and see what we got. Very, very familiar with both of these cigars. This should be a really good shootout. This could have easily been a higher seed, but sometimes just with the cigars that I was choosing. And that's another thing too. Choosing the seeding and the cigars to be involved is a lot more complicated and difficult than one would think. Or, you know, you, you start, I, it was kind of easier to pick the cigars that I wanted. Then I started thinking about seeding. I was like, man, then you want to make sure you have your Cubans represented too. 
This is a Honduran Puro, as I was stating earlier, which is actually really uh, nice. I wanted to make sure I had some representation from Honduras as well, too. I know last year I didn't have that in, but I always try to make a point to have some Cubans, Honduran cigars, uh, Nicaraguan, Dominican Republic, all different kinds of shapes. Good draw on this, pepper, cinnamon heavy. A lot, a lot of cinnamon on it. Try to make sure I got a good light on it so I can give it the best possibility to make sure it performs well without having to do any relights or touch ups. Very good draw on this one too. Intense brown sugar spice, especially coming through that retro hill. Black pepper, heavy spice, heavy brown sugar. Black pepper is probably coming in around a seven and a half. I can still feel it, but if it's if, if you like pepper, this is gonna be this is a this is what you enjoy. I can still feel it, but I like it. It's almost it, it feels it's a nice nice feeling, nice mouth coating already too. Cinnamon is gonna be more so on the regular draw. Brown sugar sweetness for me on that retro hill. Liking what I'm getting so far. This is a, a nice intense start. Me being that medium full, real full body cigar lover. This is what I, I this is what I like to see. I like the intensity. So I'm gonna keep on smoking through this first third. Come back, let you know about flavor notes, body flavor, strength. You know all that good stuff. So y'all hang tight, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Double R Army. Hey, I think we're gonna have a real, real good battle here this evening. I'm doing this matchup after dinner, and I think this is the perfect time for these two cigars because I know what these both have to offer. I think it's gonna get I think it's gonna get hot in the kitchen. So so far with this cigar, there's already been a change. You're still getting some black pepper. The brown sugar has died off some. Cinnamon is there. I'm picking up more of a cedar now. Light creaminess. The finish is beginning to get longer. Nice draw and nice, not a razor sharp burn line, but nothing I'm gonna have to pay attention to. But it was a nice shift from that brown sugar, pepper intensity at first. Still had some cinnamon there, but the cinnamon is kind of took over as far as the front runner, followed closely behind by that cedar. Creaminess on the back end. It's not super creamy, but it's there. Low side of medium full for body and flavor right already. And we're probably inch and a half, inch into the cigar. I'm gonna say low side of medium to full. Really nice, that cedar and that cinnamon and that light cream on that finish is really nice. Have to slow down a little bit, got a little bit of a cone forming, but that's to be expected. Sometimes you'll smoke cigars and they just taste really good. And you end, and for me, at least I can speak for myself. Sometimes I'll start smoking a little faster because those flavors are really nice. So I have to really keep that in mind. Don't have a super bad one, but I could tell I could, it wouldn't hurt to slow down a little bit. So that's what I'm gonna do. But I'm gonna keep on smoking through this first third. Like I said, for me, low side of medium to full for body and flavor. Strength right now is on a, a good textbook medium. So I'm gonna keep on smoking, get through this second, third, come back, let you know if anything is changing. Other than that, y'all hang tight. All right, so we're rolling right on through the second third of this Aladino Corojo Reserva. Still really enjoyable. A lot of the same flavors, not really much to report. Cinnamon has died down a little bit, so I'm still getting mostly cedar. A little creaminess on that back end and started picking up like an almond, like a nuttiness of an almond kind of quality to it. Really enjoyable, still the same for me, medium full body flavor, strength is still textbook medium. So we'll see what happens in this last two inches of this cigar, but still very nice. What I will say, <clears throat> the Corojo Reserva comes in three different sizes. There's a limited edition Corona Gorda size, I believe, the Toro and the Robusto. While I enjoy the Corona and the Toro a lot, I think they're box worthy cigars in my personal opinion, the Robusto is the one that shines for me and the reason why I say it shines over the other two sizes is the complexity in that, that particular size. Sometimes you'll get certain cigars 
and uh, hotcakes is one that immediately comes to mind. You have the Corona Gorda, the Laguita number four, Laguita number five. The Corona Gorda and the five for me are kind of eh, average cigars. The number four, which is a Robusto, for whatever reason, it just smokes, the blend smokes better in that size. I feel like the blend just, it, that's the reason why it should appeared on my top uh, 10 of 2020 cigar list, which I think it was number three or four, somewhere in there. But still, a lot of the same flavors, but you're just getting hit with a lot more transitions, which to me, I prefer. Now, speaking on that, speaking on complexity, having this talk with James the other day, and everybody's outlook on it is gonna be completely different. So, if we're looking, for me explaining it, if I'm looking at complexity, for the most part, unless it's a really cheap cigar and not really blended that well, most cigars are complex, technically. If you're looking at a cigar and it has four or five different flavors, to me then that technically is a complex cigar because you're getting multiple flavors in uh, said cigar. What I prefer in that though, while that's a complex cigar, again, I like to see a lot of transitions, maybe something of certain dominance falls off, let something else take the lead. You get different intensity levels. I like things to kind of dance around. And for my personal preference, I prefer that because that's what keeps me interested in a cigar. If I'm getting good flavors, for the four or five flavors, and they're still really good, but maybe they just intensifies or intensify, that's still good for me too. So, you know, it's just kind of, it's kind of interesting. I like to hear people's thought process or what they feel like makes a cigar complex. That to me is kind of how I feel. Like I said, really, if we want to be technical, most cigars are technically complex. Cubans, whatever you pick up, even some of the six or $7 cigars, if they are bringing in four or five different flavors, it's a complex cigar. But the complexity that I look for sometimes isn't displayed in a lot of different cigars as far as exchanging dominance, certain things dropping off and things like that. So that's where I would say, technically this is a complex cigar. You're getting a, a lot of nice flavors, but it's just not a lot of transitions. It's a lot of the same as I'm smoking through, which isn't bad. The taste is really good because I still would say first and foremost, the flavor is really what's most important. If the flavors aren't any good, it doesn't matter if it's swapping around or anything, if the flavors are not good. So flavor is really important, complexity. And then for me on that backside, the, the, the slight preference I have over strength where other people might not prefer it, that's what I look for in a cigar as well too. Even as I'm talking now, I would say we're gonna safely bump up everything to medium to full just kind of even feeling it now nothing uncomfortable but just like a slowly gradual increase up in strength so we're gonna keep on smoking through this back side of the second third come back in this last third give you guys some points and see what we got so with that note y'all hang tight stay tuned we'll be back all right so we're getting down finishing up on this aladino corojo reserva toro still pretty much the same for me nice cocoa a little bit of creaminess on that finish that nuttiness that almond quality still there a little bit of cedar still left I would say now it's bumped up to a full body. Nice mouth coating, nice long finish. Flavors are still around a medium to full. Strength is medium to full as well too. This is one of those cigars, if you don't have a lot of experience, this is something I would say be careful with the flavors are good, but you wanna be careful smoking it fast because I can see that tipping over the scale if you're, if you're not used to uh, stronger cigars and not to say that this is super strong but it has that, that sneaky creepy strength so let's go ahead and score this thing really enjoyable really good performance by this aladino for flavor i gave it a 17 out of 20 above average flavor profiles without question or profile without question draw was a 20 burn was a 20 again so far knock on wood all the cigars so far smoked in the tournament have been performing great which was not the case last year. There were quite a few cigars that had some draw issues, some burn issues. So far, everything has been smoking lovely, so that's great news. Complexity is 16 out of 20 again. The Robusto for me is the one that's the, the more complex of the three of, three of, or the most complex of the three sizes in the lineup. And then I gave the strength a 17 out of 20, just kind of slowly bumped up, got a nice medium to full strength going. Overall score on this Aladino is gonna be a 90 out of 100. Definitely an elite cigar for me again. This, the Corona and the Robusto are all box worthy cigars. Again, if you've seen my Humidor tour, you know I have a box of these. I've ran through probably two or three boxes of the Robustos. Just a really good representation of Honduran Corojo. Really good cigar. Retro Hill's nice on this too. Staying nice and cool, not getting mushy. So I'm gonna enjoy the rest of this last inch or so of this cigar. We'll come back in a little bit, smoke this number one C, Aganorsa Leaf Supremely Toro. And we will see if this number one C will get knocked out by this four C. But I'll tell you what, 
This four seed has performed like it should. Very good showing by the Aladino. So y'all hang tight, stay tuned. We'll be back with the Agonorsa Leaf. Smoking one of the uh, predecessors to this cigar. This is the Supreme Leaf by Agonorsa Leaf and Corona Gorda. The Toro will be the one featured. Everybody knows the Robusto is my favorite cigar, but we're gonna feature the Toro. I feel like a little bit more production might be a little bit easier to get. Nicaraguan Puro, Agonorsa Leaf's a huge, huge company. Huge fan of that cigar. Had to have it. All right, so a 90 out of 100 for the Aladino Corojo Reserva Toro. Now we are jumping over to the number one seed, the Agonor Leaf Supreme Leaf Toro. One of my favorite cigars, along with the Aladino going head to head. Really excited about this battle, so we're gonna go ahead and get into it. And don't forget, y'all, I'm just a cigar opinionist. Shout out to my man, Cowboy. If you're not following his channel, go over there and follow him at Cowboyism. Doing some great things over there. Really relatable guy, just down to earth. Real laid back, kind of reminds me of an older version of myself. Me and him get along just fine. So go ahead and looking into the cigar, you got tight, visible seams. There is a slight toothiness there. Looks like we got us a nice triple cap on this one. Faint line on that third one. Nice triple cap. Kind of a barnyard, kind of a very light barnyard smell. Little cedar. Kind of a little spice on this one as well too. All right, so this is a six by 54 box press Toro as I was stating earlier. Retail on this one is around $10.50, so you might as well say an $11 cigar. This was the uh, one right behind the, the cigar that got all the notoriety and all the hype, the Robusto version. Now they also have a Corona, uh, Corona Gorda version out as well too. Light, that light fudgy taste I get on it, on Nicaraguan. It's, it's kind of weird, I just get in an all Nicaraguan Piro, or not all, uh, all of them, but a good number of them. It seems like a lot of Aganor, so I get that same flavor off of it. Nice, clo nice closed foot on this one too, so go ahead and light it up and see what we got. Big old cinnamon hit off that wrapper leaf. Natural tobacco sweetness. Nice spice, black pepper. Good earth note on it too. Kind of the same as the Aladino. I'm still even feeling it in the nasal cavity. Getting a little brown sugar now on that too. Real nice, about, a, about the same, about a seven and a half on black pepper. Nice spice, little brown sugar. Nice earth. All right, so we got us a good light. I'm gonna go ahead and smoke down on this a little bit, come back, give you body flavor strength. Y'all know all that good stuff, so we'll be back here shortly, so y'all hang tight. All right, so we're working our way through this first third of this Agonorsa Leaf Supreme Leaf Toro. Go ahead and say it now, this is not gonna win the award for the prettiest ash or burn line in history of cigar smoking, but no complaints, it's not needing any attention. The ash is pretty flaky, but the flavors are still pretty nice. Pepper and spice is still there, but died down tremendously compared to that first inch of the cigar. So still picking up some brown sugar sweetness, nice natural tobacco sweetness, nice cedars come in there, which is really nice. At first, it just seemed like it was just gonna be really, really spicy with nothing else really showing for it. But the sweetness has kind of helped out a lot. I would easily say right now we're at the medium to full mark for body and flavor. Strength is still around a medium for me. Picking up a nice espresso note that you get towards the end of the draw and it's kind of there on the finish too. Light cream, that cedar's really nice, that brown, light brown sugar is nice as well too. Pretty much what we got going right now, I'm gonna keep on smoking. Get through this second third. Now what I will say about this too, it didn't happen with the Robusto really and now that the Corona Gorda is out and I've had the chance to smoke a couple of those, it's not, it's, that's probably been the best as far as the constructions to say. But the Toros for some reason, I felt like when they came out they were a little bit too wet meaning that they were not, you know, they needed a little bit more aging time. They needed a little bit more time to dry out. And what I noticed a lot with these Toros and I've had these now for I don't know, the Toro came out probably five or six months ago, maybe somewhere around in there. 
every time I smoked them, the burn lines were never razor sharp and the ashes were, the ash was kind of flaky. Just the burn on these things are not perfect. I mean, of course I'm not needing to do any touch-ups or anything like that, but just aesthetically looking at it, they're just kind of, for lack of better words, raggedy. And, I, and I've realized in the Toros, it's been really like that. Now I will say, with age, this is becoming a little bit more enjoyable. To me, it's still not up there with that Robusto. For me, that the Toro and the Corona Gorda are just chasing the bigger brother or the, the OG release. It's just like, that release to me is always gonna hold a special place in my heart. Super intense flavors, super rich, nice transitions. This one is still really enjoyable too. Nice smoke production. Nice clean taste on this one as well too. So we'll keep on smoking. I'll come back in the second, third, let you know if anything changes. But yeah, definitely medium to full for body and flavor. Textbook medium for strength. So y'all hang tight, stay tuned, we'll be back. All right, so we're working our way through the second third of this Aganor Leaf Supreme Leaf Toro. I don't know guys, it's, it's, as I've been smoking probably within the last five or six draws, the sweetness that I was getting that was helping out a lot has, has abruptly faded. Still just really now just getting black pepper and cedar. Still not, it's still a, a taste okay, but I just wish that the sweetness would be there. Burn line's not razor sharp, but I don't think I'm gonna have to do any touch-ups. Draw's still been fine, but that sweetness disappearing. I'm hoping it kind of reappears or this cigar may be in trouble. Yeah, just, just really getting a, a light black pepper on the end. Some cedar spice is what's predominant now. It's not a super spicy cigar now like it was in the beginning, but that sweetness fading is really, really turning me off right now. So we still got quite a bit of cigar left. Hopefully, hopefully this is just a little area and it'll come back in, but we'll see how it goes. But I don't know, y'all. The finish is still fine. It's just it's just cedar, earth, and black pepper. That's that's what I'm getting. That nice cocoa, that light creaminess was that was there. That natural tobacco sweetness is just straight up disappeared. I said the, I don't think I'm gonna have to touch this up. I think it's gonna correct itself, but we'll see. So we'll we'll come back and I'll let you know of any updates or anything like that. So we'll keep on smoking. So y'all hang tight. All right. So we're working our way still on this Agnor Leaf Supreme Leaf Toro. Good news is. The burn line was able to salvage itself, it's corrected itself. I looked for a minute like I was gonna have to touch it up, but it slowly started correcting itself back to a time or back to an area where I'm not concerned. Bad news is the flavor is still just consistently going down and down. I've even tried to purge this thing a few times. Even the cedar is kind of starting to become muted. Now what I'm getting now is a nuttiness, some earth and some faint black peppers what I'm getting. A slight creaminess there, but not not too much. Just not a lot going on. It just seems like the cigar is slowly starting to taper down. Still feel like medium to full on the body. Flavors, low side of medium to full. Still about a medium strength for me. I'm gonna go ahead and score this thing. I don't see it changing too much, really, man. I'm, I'm smoking it now. Even on the finish, that cedar's kinda gone now. Just picking up like that, that nuttiness, that earth, a little faint black pepper. That's pretty much it. It's not a, leaving a bad taste or anything in my mouth, but it's nothing to where it was in the first, the end of the first third, starting that second third. So we'll go ahead and score it. For flavor, hate to do it, but I had to, of course, like I've said before, it doesn't mean that all of them are gonna be like this, but I have to score the one that I'm smoking currently at this time, how I'm feeling right now. Flavor for me, I'm giving it a 15 out of 20. Again, just this between at the end of the second third and starting to go now, it's just, I could just see it just slowly tape, tapering down. It's just going down. So 15 out of 20 for flavor. Draw, I gave a 20 out of 20. Never had any issues with the draw. Burn a 20 out of 20, though a few a couple of times it looked like I might need to touch it up, but never had to do anything. So I'm gonna reward the, com the construction of the cigar. Complexity is 16 out of 20. You're getting some flavors there, but not really any huge transitions or anything like that. Would have really loved to seen that brown sugar kind of natural tobacco sweetness. The cocoa that was on the finish that was in that second third kind of remain. It's just not there. Yep, it's just it's just tapering down. Gave the strength a 16 out of 20. Cigar for me right now at this moment, how I'm scoring is going to get an 87 out of 100. So if you could do the math, number one seed goes down. First big upset of the tournament. Fully comfortable with this score on this particular cigar right now. The Aladino definitely just outperformed it. Much more enjoyable. 
it is what it is, man. It's the tournament. This is what happens. Probably some more top seeds are going to go down. Who knows? But as I will say, so far, of all the cigars I've smoked, the construction has been spot on. Once I've lit every cigar, I've never had to pick up the lighter again, and I'm I'm gonna always praise it. I think that's great, but just this particular cigar just starting to taper down. So it is what it is. It looks like the number four seed, the Aladino Corojo Reserva Toro, is gonna be the one marching on. The number one seed, Aganorsa Leaf Signature, or I'm sorry, Ag Aganorsa Leaf Supreme Leaf Toro is gonna go home. That's the way it swings sometimes. So y'all know the name of the game is relaxation and enjoyment. And damn sure don't forget to be driven, never motivated. We will catch you on the next matchup. Y'all be good.